Oh, yes, I'll just be very quick. Oh, sorry, I'll... Oh, okay, I'll release it. All right, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Okay, so I want to start putting in some of the families that I've uh, made for this uh, tiny house, tiny terrace, and um, uh, at least start to get the entry to look a bit more uh, like it does in real life. And I'll maybe do it in the 3D view just to show you how that works. And so with the door tool, we go to low family and then browse to the P drive, student resources, interior design, and then Revit library. And you can see there I've made a folder called tiny terrace resources. But I just want to remind you, if you want to make a shortcut, you can drag uh, that Revit library folder over to the grey bar on the left and let go and it will make a shortcut there so you don't have to keep browsing up here, you can just click on that button and flick between the different folders that you've got. So again, Tiny Terrace Resources and there you can see I've just got four that I've put there for now, I'll add more to it later. And so I'll start with the the entry door that has a fan light. So that's the fiddly part, putting the fan light in if you ever have to make a door like this. Um, but that's all done for you, so you can just load that one in. And I'm even going to try placing it in this 3D view, so you can see it's going to snap to the level um, that it needs to be on. And you can also adjust the property, so if you think it needs to be smaller, and it probably does, if you look at the photo. Yeah, so it's, uh, I've got one with some glass um, panels, but otherwise it's pretty much the same as this. And yeah, so it probably is a bit wide as it is. So in properties there you'll see there's a smaller version, the 820 by 2100. It's probably more like the size they've got there. And then clicking to place it. Oh no, I put them back to solid. There we are. So it's, yeah, so it's even got the right door panel. But the important thing is it's got a fan light, which is an important thing. And so then I'm going to place another door and again load family and uh, get the French door with um, also uh, with a fan light. And so we're coming to here so you can see again this one also has different sizes that's far too wide but when you go into properties there you'll see I've made a smaller size and that is actually quite typical for French doors they do have uh, quite narrow uh, door panels individually and they, they often do fit into a standard door size so 900 or maybe the 1300 is better here I think it might be a slightly wider than normal one I'm not sure we can't see the towel there but uh, yeah. yeah yeah so you can adjust that I mean that's something you, you would be able to change even though in real life it might be hard to change the width of it I think for this oh no that does look fairly narrow doesn't it so I think I will go to the 900. And that's typical. I've worked on plenty of projects with French doors just like this, and they often are fairly narrow openings, which means each door panel becomes you know, very narrow. Uh, so that should have the door on the right side because it opens out. And if you go to the floor plan, you can see that. Ah, I've been a bit slack setting up the graphics there. So okay, maybe I'll just fix this on the fly. It's an easy thing to show you. If you've got 3D components like that showing in a family, it's a good chance to have a look at how you can edit things in a family. So you don't have to make them again from scratch, you just need to edit them. So I'll select the door, edit family. So the problem is these 3D components that I've been adjusting are showing in the plan, I don't want them to. So I'm going to select them and go to visibility settings and turn that plan option off. And the same with the other one. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can, but the problem with with families like this, they're set up, they're set up to be more involved, and so it's actually using these things called parameters, which is which are good because it means it's adjustable, but then you have to adjust those. So here, this is the parameter that sets the height, so I can adjust that when I select the dimension. It's a bit different to normal dimensions. You can click on that, and then you can change the measurement. 
can see they're exported with us, with it. And uh, so again, so that's how you adjust uh, parametric things. But what that means, if it's parametric, you don't often need to change it in the family. So I'll just show you. So we can see there it's called fan light height. So I'm going to load that back into my project, overwrite, and you can see there it's going to take these. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, so it's the fan light I'm seeing. So I better go and check that. So it's one of these parts. So I'm going to get all of these solid bits up there. I have to do them individually. And just make sure none of them are showing in plan. And possibly it's even the, uh, the door jam. Ah, but did I have the cutting? So I'll just do one last thing. Yeah. Okay, so again, I'm saving this so that when you load it, it'll have all these changes. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, so that's. Oh, okay. So it's not showing there. Uh, so it's going to be one of these things. Let's turn these options off as well. So I was only looking at the 3D when I made this for you, so I should have checked these other things though. And of course you've got to do them one at a time like this. you changing these settings. Yeah, let's see that. And then it's, I think it is the jam though. That was alright. I wanted to try and use it, but I just said, okay. So. There we go. Oh, yeah, so then one of these things. It's pretty obvious. It's the glass. And so, all right. So it gives you an idea of some of the things that frustrate people a little bit when they first start setting up families with Trevor. You have to think about how it would work in a lot of different situations. It's not just like SketchUp or, or even AutoCAD where you just draw things the way you want them to be. You're always sort of planning ahead and thinking about lots of different options. But what that then means, oh, so this last one drives me mad, but I've got to get it right. Um, that one's okay. What did I miss? Oh, I know what it is. Okay, so it's because I've got two, two lots of panels. Okay, so yeah, it's good for you to see this because, again, this is what you can think about when you're making your own families. And so what that means, with all of that set up, which is, it is a lot of work, um, now I can see the fan light's too high. But I don't need to go and change my modelling. All I need to do is go back to the type properties now and find that fan light height parameter, which isn't actually in type properties here, sorry, it's in the element properties because it's an instance parameter. It must be, and here it is. So, uh, fan light height, 800, and I can bring that down to what I want it to be, so maybe 600. Or, yeah, so whether that bit there can be lower, 500. So, that's the great thing about um, parameters and having all of that set up built into the families that you can then make different variations on that family and that's how you get all the productivity benefits of these uh, types of programs. I've got my doors and then I want to get the uh, column as well. So back to my level one plan and then to place the column it... actually I didn't check to see if it was architectural or structural but we'll find out. So if I go to column I'll start with structural column and then click Again, load family. It remembers where I was looking before, so I don't need to browse. I can uh, already in the right folder, so I can just choose my column. And yes, I've done that structural, perfect. And then I'm just going to click my eye to place that where it should go on the corner of each of those um, corners of the floor. And in 3D, uh, oh, I didn't check my levels. Okay, that's me. Uh, I always do that. I should show you the right way. I can fix it, but I'll show you what I should have done. 
So back to structural column. I always forget. Engineers think upside down compared to us. They start from the ground and then go down, which makes sense when they're doing their structural calculations. Right, they want to do the footings and calculate the things that are going to hold your building up first before they think about the building. So they want to go down. We don't want to, we want to go up. So you always need to remember structural columns. You have to change that option to height from instead of depth. And then you can see it's already picked up the right level. Level 1 CL is where it should go to. And I can then place the columns. And I should have known because they were grey before, which told me they were underneath. Now they're solid and that means they're going up and there they are. So I've got the two columns sitting on the floor but they're floating above it because remember I brought the floor down 100 mil. So anything like a column of course gives you the option to adjust the height of the base there, the base offset. I'll make the same as my floor, minus 100. And all families give you these options to fine tune the height. So again, in properties, you've got one minus 100. Now, the top is missing the roof for a different reason. It's because that roof doesn't line up exactly with my columns. Not a problem. You can go into the um, plan view where we made the roof before, edit in place, and it's good to practice this. Select the sweep. Edit sweep, sketch path, and then I can adjust that path so that it follows where my columns are. But how do I see the columns? Yep, so now you can adjust the view properties here. You'll see later that's, that's a good option. You could go to a 3D view, that, that would be an option as well. But yeah, you're thinking the right way. Probably the easiest way is to change to a different view where we can see the columns. You can do that midstream while you're drawing. I'll go to this one and I can see there. I'm still working on the sketch, but I can easily see my floor. And so I'll use the Align tool now and simply pick my floor and then the roof edge. Floor, roof edge, boundary here is fine, and then the roof edge again. And that will line up perfectly. And that's why it's not worth spending too much time making it perfect to begin with, because you're always going to have to come back and adjust it. And that's a standard approach in Revit. Don't be too picky about exact measurements to start because you can always refine it as you go. And so when I finish this you'll see back in the 3D view it's exactly on top. So there we are, it's starting to look like a building and once we get the stairs there that'll look pretty much like the real thing. Uh, so the very last thing I'll show you maybe is how to get a copy of that door directly below um, that one. So in the level one floor plan, I'll select the door, copy the clipboard in the clipboard panel there, the, the two pages. The reason I always click on that button is because control C should work, but for some reason it doesn't always uh, do what it should in Revit. Yeah, normally control C does work, otherwise I click on that button. And then I'm going to go to ground floor and choose that drop down menu under paste and then choose align to current view. And that puts a door in the same spot but on this floor plan. So when we look in 3D we can see they're lined up exactly. And then the fan light is too high. So well, don't want to go too far. There should be an option to turn the fan light off. But uh, I'd have to uh, actually I have to set that up properly. We've only got the options we are chose. So instead, we'll just bring the fan light down to 200 for now. It's going to look pretty awful, but um, yeah, it is, it's freaked out. So we'll just make it a bit higher. Um, 300. Yep. Again, it's still pretty awful, but it'll fit. And I'll adjust that family further and I'll give it an option to just turn the fan light off altogether. What happens if you just put a zero on it? Oh, it'd it work, but um, it'd, it'd give us an error. Let's try it. I'll, I'll give it a go. 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's probably something here. You can still see there's a bit of glass floating inside the wall, but who cares? No one's going to see it. Um, maybe inside we might see. Yeah, okay, but we can fix that later. That's all right. Um, yeah, that's annoying. Uh, it's flush at the same level as the floor. Yeah. You can adjust it, so you can adjust the threshold height or the sill height. Oh, now here you can see this one says minus 15, but that's just because there's a little, there's a threshold piece there. But the top of that is in line with the floor. So it's good to play with those things and then remember that you've got all the other families that you can use to start doing your planning. So when you go to component, load family, even in the default library, you'll have standard things like, you know, toilets and basins and uh, other things. So, you know, water closets, your toilets. And um, once you start placing those elements, that will give you a much better idea of scale. So that room might look fairly big until you put a toilet in it and you realise even as a bathroom, that's a pretty tight little space. So, in, you know... Oh, yeah, okay. So, for that, yeah, I'll show you that. Um, so, you just have the gable there. So oh, yeah, so you just cap that. So, okay, so for that, I'll go to the level 1 CL um, plan, and I'm going to select that roof and go to edit in place. You could go to model in place to make a new family essentially, but it's better to go to edit in place because then it's going to add it to this one and they're grouped together. And that's a good thing to think about. So when you use edit in place instead of model in place, so if I go edit in place and then I'm just going to make an extrusion. Don't want to get into planes yet, so I'm just doing it with the default, which is this level. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle over that uh, hole. And then we probably want to, pro to project out a little bit. So I'm going to select one of those lines and then just nudge it a couple of times with the arrow and do that on each side. Just so it projects slightly. And then I'll finish it there and go into my 3D view so I can see basically that it was starting on that ceiling level. So it's still down inside my roof. But I can use the arrows now to stretch that so it sticks out at the top. And then I can bring the bottom up so that it lines up with the top of that roof and then bring the top back down a little bit to make it the right height. So something like that um, yeah, it should be about right, even though in real life uh, they would have, you know, because when they're building it they can customise it, so this would come back a bit further because I don't think it comes out quite that much. But it should be alright like this. Don't want to get into... Um, non-symmetrical. And unfortunately we're not going to get photos. Yeah, we'll see, we're not going to get photos that show us, so it doesn't really matter. But actually on the elevations you'll see... Um, oh yeah, so that's the way we drew it yeah, before, but in real life it will probably come back, you know, something like this. But it's, it's too much work to have that, so... So that should be fine, just like that. And unfortunately, if you want to put a gutter on this one, um, it's a bit more work because you'd have to model that with another suite. I know we can come back to that later, but uh, if you can get it that far, that would be good. And then the other thing that you might have noticed is that they do have a gable panel here that encloses this. And that's another one that I can show you quickly because um, that's, that's a nice thing to have and it's a good chance to look at extrusions again. And I can show you some different planes because this is a good. Um oh, it does a little bit, yeah, yeah. It kind of does, but for heritage, they'd make you keep that. Yeah, I know you do get less light, but um, it's an important thing for the look because if it's open, it just looks too contemporary, I suppose. So, uh, or just not, you know, not traditional. So.
Um, yeah, it's, I think it's a good thing to have. So if we go back to um, this time, model in place to make a new object. I'll set the category to roofs. Again, lots of these things are optional at this stage, but it's good just to um, get an idea. And so now, what's what happens when I go to extrusion? It allows me to pick a plane because I'm drawing in elevation and it doesn't know what the default plane should be. It doesn't know to use the level that I'm on. But that's right, that, that's what we want actually. So now I'm going to leave it on pick a plane, click OK, and I'm going to choose the surface of the fascia. So think of it like you're picking up your drawing board and putting it at the angle you want to be drawing. So I'm drawing on the surface of this fascia, even though I can draw outside, it, uh, outside of that area, um, that just sets my plane. So I'll go to wireframe, and then I can see the roof. There's the roof underneath. I'm just going to draw a triangle, tracing over those lines. Done. And so again, I'll do my usual thing of not worrying about the depth just yet. Finish it. Go to a 3D view, and we can see it's poking out. But then I can stretch it back a little bit and then bring the front back as well, so it goes behind that barge board. And that gives us a nice, correct gable. And we'll worry about the materials later, but that's, uh, that's how it is. And that, that is technically the gable. The roof follows it, but this panel here, that's actually the bit that's called the gable. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those traditional things, and uh, yeah, it'd be nice to have that. And so I've got some families to give you for the balustrade, but you know, do that after you've got the columns. So that should be plenty for today. Um,